Good morning. This is Eugene May. I am the T Ministries located in Dover, Florida. And I invite you to stay tuned for the next few minutes as we talk about the Word of God and what the Word of God literally says to us as believers in Jesus Christ. In fact, today I want to talk to you about agreement about being in agreement with one another. And of course, there is such a thing as the prayer of agreement. And so we're going to be talking about this today. And I want to encourage you, get ready to start putting yourself in a position of agreement with other people and with God concerning the needs of your lives. I believe that God is for us, he's not against us, and he wants to do the things that are necessary in our lives. And I believe things are necessary. I believe it's necessary to be healed. I believe it's necessary to be blessed materially and even financially. I believe it's necessary for us to have our whole lives in the very hands of God, trusting him to do the things that are necessary. But there are things in the Word, there are guidelines that God has given us that I believe we need to understand. And when we understand them, then we will be able to walk in the power of the Spirit like never before. So as we begin, I want to take you into the book of Matthew. In Matthew chapter 18, Jesus, of course, is speaking to his disciples. He is speaking stories or parables, and he did that continually. But he comes to a, a place in his teaching this day where he says in verse 18, Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, he says, Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I'm not going to take the opportunity this morning to talk about binding and loosing, but that is a subject that we will get into later. But we need to use that verse in order to make the transition into the next two verses. And so, he says to us, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you, how many? Two of you shall agree on earth concerning anything, concerning what? Concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them of my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Wow. When I read that, and uh, again, I'm not going to go back into binding and loosing today. That's a future teaching. But when I look at what we just read, it opens a door of victory to every one of us. It means that we need to be in relationship with one another, not just in relationship with God, but relationship with one another. You know, I believe that's why there is a group called the church. And I want to tell you, the church is not bound by just the, your name on a roll in a particular congregation. The church is what God established upon this earth building his kingdom upon this earth. And so he's talking to each one of us as believers in Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about a denomination. I'm not talking about a group or even an independent local congregation. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the church of Jesus Christ. We need to be in relationship with the church of Jesus Christ. Now, that doesn't preclude the fact that we gather together with a particular congregation or that we even have an identification on our name as 
uh, Baptist or Methodist or Assembly of God or Church of God or, or whatever we might call ourselves. That is not the point. The point is God wants us to be in relationship with one another. And so we need one another. And he begins, and I want to say it again in verse 19. He says, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Wow. That's a tremendous, tremendous door that has been opened up to us. Are we in agreement? That's a question that I think only you as an individual and with someone else that you believe that you ought to agree with can answer. Are we really in agreement? We believe very strongly in the prayer of agreement. And I hesitate sometimes to agree with some things that people want me to agree with. Uh, in the, uh, until this pandemic started, we were traveling to the nations of the world. And so we uh, are planning to do that again soon, by the way, just a little side note. But God wants us to learn some lessons. And I've been in meetings where we have had prayer lines, where we've had the sick come forward, we've had other needs that we are going to pray for, we've had people come forward to uh, actually pray with them individually and corporately. And I've had people ask me questions like this, would you agree with me? And then they would tell me what they wanted to have agreement about. And some of the things that I've heard, I could not agree with. And I've had to literally say to them, I'm sorry, I cannot agree with that. You're going to have to find somebody else to agree with you, or you're going to have to pray that prayer alone, because it was something sometimes ridiculous sometimes uh, very self-serving, and uh, I, I refuse very rarely to pray with someone or agree with someone. But the thing is that I want you to see is that we need to be able to agree with whatever the circumstance is that they're talking about. And so when people call me, and I do receive calls here in my office from time to time, people call me and ask me to agree concerning things. I often do that. But there are times that I cannot agree. Why? Because what I'm saying is that I'm putting myself in agreement with something that I really do not believe or really cannot stand to see happen. I cannot stand in faith to see happen. See, I know my limitations. I know the things that uh, God tells me I can agree about and I can't. But the point of this teaching today is not whether we can or cannot agree, but we need to understand that. It's what happens when we do agree. When we agree concerning the things that God has put within his word and he has put within our hearts, God begins to move. In fact, Jesus said, if any two of you on the earth, so let's just have a conversation here. There's two of us, you and me as individuals. And I know that there are many people that are watching and listening to me right now. You can be that other person. He says to me, Eugene, if there's two of you that agree on this earth, now that's our position. We are on this earth. We're alive and well on planet earth. Okay. He said, if any two of you on the earth shall agree as touching anything that they ask. You see, this is why 
sometimes I can't agree about things because if I really agree, I am maybe entering into something that is sin. Somebody asked me, can you agree that my marriage will dissolve so I can marry this other woman or this other man? No, 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 no. <laughs> That's contrary to the word of God. I, I don't do that. And so he says, if we agree as touching anything, it shall be done by my Father in heaven. God has put himself in obligation with that prayer of agreement, that agreement that we make with someone else. Now, he goes on in the next verse to say something that is so important to us. And I use this other verse in different ways, and you do too. You know, when we come together as a local congregation of the church, sometimes I hear people say, and sometimes I say even myself, well, where two or three are gathered together, God says he's in our midst. Well, that's true, I believe, especially if we are gathered together in agreement, because that is what he's talking about. I want you to look at that verse. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in the midst of them. You see, the subject here is found in verse 19, the prayer of agreement. And so where two or three people are gathered together in agreement, this is what he's talking about. Now, it's okay to say, well, where two or three are gathered together here in this meeting or whatever, that we believe that God is there because he is in us. And so we're gathered together. But the purpose of this verse of scripture was not gathering together in a church meeting or a group meeting. The purpose of this verse was for us to be gathered together in agreement. Because where two or three of us are gathered together in agreement concerning anything that we would ask the Father, God is there. And so that agreement goes far beyond just the two or three of us concerning any particular thing, but God enters into that agreement. This is something that I think is so important for us to understand, that God actually enters in to our agreement. In the Old Testament, in Genesis chapter 11, and like if you're following along in your word with me, I'd like for you to go there with me. We have a circumstance that really begins to teach us a lesson of agreement. At the beginning of chapter 11, uh, the people are gathered together. And in fact, let me begin reading at verse 1. It says, Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. They lived there. Then they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one. I want you to notice this. The people are one. That means they're in unity. And they have one language. And this is what they began to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be from them. Wow. He's talking about them being in agreement. He says, these people have started a tower. They're building a tower to heaven. 
He said, because they're in agreement, because they're one, they're unified, they will accomplish what they desire. And I believe that this particular principle began to be founded and noticed right here in the 11th chapter of Genesis, almost at the very beginning. God says about the people, if they are in agreement, if they are one, nothing will stop them. I believe that principle is still true whether we're in the church or whether we're in the world. Because when the world begins to get unified, things begin to happen. And so here, God scatters the people and changes their languages. Why? Because he had to stop what they were doing. Why? Because they were in agreement with it. That is how powerful agreement is that God even had to come and stop an agreement by confusing their languages and dividing the people and sending them across the face of the earth in different directions. Now that is how strong this principle is. And so I want to encourage you, as you are involved in the circumstances of your life, consider the principle of agreement. Consider praying the prayer of agreement. Because you see, Jesus said, and we're going all the way back to Matthew chapter 18, verses 19 and 20. Jesus said that if any two of you on the earth shall agree as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of the Father which is in heaven. And so God wants you to understand that God has put this principle in the world. And yes, he did have to stop it at the building of the Tower of Babel. But he will not stop it with you when you are in line with his word and agreement with the things that God has put within your heart that you need in this world. And so I want to go to verse 20 in Matthew chapter 18 one more time, where it says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, where two or three are in unity, where two or three are in agreement, there I am, Jesus says, in the midst of that. Now I want to take you to another verse of scripture here very quickly. In the book of 2 Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul is talking to the church at Corinth, and he's also talking to us. And so he says to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, he's talking about his preaching and his teaching when he came to them and ministered unto them. He said, this is how I taught you. This is how Timothy and how Silas taught you as we came. He says, but as God is faithful, our word to you was not yes and no. It wasn't a yes and no gospel. It wasn't a yes and no teaching. He says, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, Silvanus, who's also called Silas in the book of Acts. And Timothy was not yes and no, but in him was yes. For our teaching was always saying that God said yes. God said yes. But what does he say yes to? In verse 20, it says, For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him amen to the glory of God through us. Now, we're talking about agreement today. All of the promises of God are yes. And our amen, when we say amen to that, what we are doing is putting ourselves in agreement with God, in agreement with God's word. 
When we say yes to the promises of God, that is exactly what has happened. In fact, there's another translation that I want to share with you of this verse. It simply says this, for all of the promises of God in him are yes, and our amen is to the glory of God the Father. Whose amen? Our amen. That means we're in agreement with God. Now, Jesus said, if any two of you on the earth shall agree as touching anything, it shall be done for them of the Father which is in heaven. But I believe also, if you cannot find anyone to agree with you, you can go to the word of God and find his promise, and you can pray the prayer of faith. And when you pray that prayer of faith, this is what's going to happen. God is going to put himself in agreement with you and things will begin to happen in your life because you have put yourself in agreement with God. Let me show you one more passage of scripture before we complete the teaching today. In the book of James chapter 5, James is writing concerning specific needs specific needs in the body of Christ. And he starts out in verse 13. He says, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing songs. Let him sing songs. That's great. That's you personally. But then he goes a little deeper. He goes a little further in his teaching. He says, is any among you sick? Let him, and here's where we come to agreement. Let him call for the elders of the church, the elders, and that's plural. Maybe you only have one elder, maybe you only have a pastor. But call for him. The call for the elders of the church, because what's going to happen is, they are going to get in agreement with you, or he is going to get in agreement with you. And remember, he and you are two people. Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they will be forgiven. And he goes on talking about issues of life. The thing that I want you to see is, he said, if you're sick, this is something that is most definitely in the purview of the will of God for you, and that is to be healed. He says in Exodus 15, 26, I am the Lord that heals you. He says in 1 John or, or third John verse two, he says, beloved, I pray above all things, above everything that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. The will of God is for you to be healed. In fact, we just finished a series of teachings on questions concerning divine healing. And so I believe I can say unequivocally that it is the will of God for you to be healed and to walk in health. And so, if you're sick, call for the elders of the church. What they are going to do is come and, yes, pray the prayer of faith, but when there's more than one person and they are praying for the same thing, that's a prayer of agreement. And so God has given his word that if you have a need, especially in the area of sickness in this particular passage, that you can call for the elders of the church and they can come and pray over you and that prayer will be answered and you will be healed. Why? Because they're in agreement. They want what you want. Now, let me broaden the picture just a minute. God wants us to understand because of what Jesus said in Matthew 18, verses 19 and 20, that it's not just for healing. It's for everything that you might need. 
What about your family being born again? What about your financial needs, the things that you need in your personal life right now? We've been in the midst of this pandemic with COVID-19 for almost a year and a half. People are sick. People need healing. But I want to tell you, people need other things too. They need jobs. They need finances. They need someone to agree with them. I want to encourage you as a believer. Get in relationship with people. If you're not a part of a particular church group or organization, uh, I want to tell you, you, you need to be. But find other believers. Get in relationship with them. And in the midst of that relationship, found a relationship that has substance. And when you found a relationship that is having substance, then you can get an agreement with it. And you can pray the prayer of faith. And that prayer of faith will touch the circumstance of your life. And so this isolation is coming to an end, by the way. And here in Florida, we do not have to be isolated anymore. And we pray that that doesn't happen again in this whole earth. But I want to tell you this. God wants you to be in relationship with people and use that relationship not just for your own needs, but for everyone's needs. But in that relationship, be able to pray the prayer of faith, the prayer of agreement, and see God do what he can do. You see, two's good. Well, what about three? I like to expand the relationship. I like to expand the principle and let that principle be in effect in every area of my life. And I encourage you to do the same. I want to pray with you today. Father, I thank you so much for the word, and I thank you for what you have spoken in your word to us. And Lord, I thank you that you are our healer, you are our deliverer, you are our provider in every way. And Lord, today, as we bring this teaching to a close, I agree with everyone that is watching and listening to this today that healing is theirs, that provision is there in theirs in every area of their lives. And Lord, we thank you that you are doing it. If relatives, loved ones need to be saved, Lord, we agree for their salvation. We just agree that your word is true and you will do exactly what you have promised in the name of Jesus. And we pray this and say, Amen. And glory to God. This is Eugene May, and I thank you for watching and listening today. And I thank you for what you are doing to help us take this message to the nations of the world. And so I encourage you, if you want to contribute to these broadcasts, to these videos. Go to Eugene May at eugenemay.org on PayPal, and you will be able to help us do this. God bless you, and we appreciate every one of you in Jesus' name. Bye-bye. See you next week.